All right, now we're recording, go ahead. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask everybody to put themselves on mute um, so that uh, um, it'll be easier for background noise. And um, uh, there we go. And we're recording this, so if you have a problem with that, you can turn your video off and just listen. It won't be a real long class because, uh, again, the, my information goes hand in hand with an autocrat who is setting up to have an event and has decided they would like to have horses. Having equine at an event is an extra few steps for folks because there's other concerns you have to take into consideration. One being, you have to pick a site that will accommodate water, parking, and room for games. Now, most equestrians, and there's so few of us anymore, but most equestrians usually park their, their trailers and then their horses are either pinned by their trailers or they are high tide between trees or from the trailer to a tree. So we, we are for the most part self-contained, but back to getting a site. First thing you do is you find a site. And if you find a site that you think will be acceptable, one or two, then you send out an invite to all the equestrians on their equestrian Facebook page so that they can see if that site will be accommodating one and two if they're going to be available on that date because traveling with equestrians or traveling with horses is an endeavor <clears throat> we all know just traveling sometimes this is an endeavor but you tack on a horse and now you have extra gas and so forth um do I have a question? Somebody okay. just joined Kel, so I muted him for you. Oh, okay. That was probably Robin, I hope. It looks like it, yeah. Okay. So um, so now you have a site and now you have equestrians who have somewhat committed because things can change. We all know that. Uh, it, we could be rained out. Um, something can happen with the horse. Something can happen with an equestrian. But let's just go forward with the idea that we're gonna have eight to 10 equestrians coming. One of the things the autocrat needs to do about a month out-ish is make sure that they have touched base with how many equestrians they can have on site because sometimes people just show up, which we know. <laughs> but biggest thing is making sure if they can find a way to have shade and water. Those are two very important things for having horses. Shade is iffy. Sometimes if we have trees, we can back into the trees. Sometimes we're in an area where there is no shade until you, you know, until the sun changes direction um, um making sure that you one of the other things that an autocrat needs to do is get a hold of a marshal who is an authorized marshal for equestrian who can be a marshal in charge preferably that marshal in charge should be on site on the day of opening so that they can check Coggins. Coggins is important. Now, if we're having an event, a Coggins, let me back up. A Coggins is like an HIV test for horses. I'm sure there's another name and I'm sure Robin might even know it better. But there is a, a, a test is taken once a year. It needs to be negative and it needs to be current. Um, if the area we're going to has other uh, other, what's the word I'm looking for? 
livestock that could be there could be problems then um, the marshals should be checking to make sure if there's a vet available for on call that's something she can work with autocrat on or he can work with the autocrat on depending um, uh, making sure that the horses if the equestrian owner is concerned making sure that the horses have their vaccinations that they want them to have to go into that area now if we're traveling out of the out of texas it's wise to have a um, health certificate done for the horses as well oklahoma doesn't always request it but it's wise to have it mississippi does so you want to have it to travel those states because it's important that the health the health of the horses um, is good okay so now you have a site and you have a designated amount of folks that are coming that say they're coming you might end up with a few more you might end up with a few less now the marshal in charge of the equestrian will probably reach out to somebody who wants to run a championship or a tournament not all events will have championships but definitely having a tournament is a lot of fun because you want people to be able to ride their horses go on a trail ride show off with mounted archery or with you know our games our challenge course um I love the last two years challenge courses that we have had at BAM have been awesome. And I have to thank Robin for that one. Um, I don't know her new name very well. I can't remember it, but she and I sat down and came up with this wonderful course that carried over for the next year. And we have a lot of fun with it because you can set it up anyway. You can put rules in, you can do anything with it. It's all about sportsmanship horsemanship and skill and decorum how do you handle your horse how do you present yourself you know do you have a horse that's having a bad day and are you handling it well <laughs> are you handling it with the horse well our main rule is don't be stupid if your horse is having a bad day then don't ride it don't let anybody else ride it because you don't know what those horses, that's 1,200 pounds of horse flesh that you don't know what's gonna do, and it can happen. <clears throat> okay, so now you've got it set up, and now you've got a tournament going on, or possibly going on. Um, it will be up to the marshal to take care of the field to make sure, one, that the horses are in good condition, two, that the horses are safe, Three, that everybody who's riding or competing is an authorized rider and game holder. If we're having archery, is making sure we have an archery marshal that is a mounted archery marshal out there. Um, and basically, we have ground crew. Now, the autocrat pretty much can turn everything over to the equestrian marshal and to the equestrian coordinator. Now, for gate, it is important that at gate, we have the waiver. But there's something else that has to be at gate, and I'm gonna see if anybody can think of that and tell me what it has to be. I'm gonna leave some things out so people can think about and ask me questions. So, once the horses come to gate and they check in we usually let them go we check their cognizance before we unload them or and health certificates now they are allowed to have them on phones now you can have pictures of them and that's great because paper sometimes gets wet gets lost gets torn god knows what you open the door and it blows out i had that happen it blew out from my visor on the highway going to an event we had to stop and turn around and find this yellow piece of paper <laughs> because this is back when we didn't have pictures on phones <laughs> so um um so and the and the other thing that the equestrian coordinator and the marshal in charge has to be mindful that everybody wants to come and pet a horse now 
that is up to the owner to allow whether their horse can be petted at that time. But it's very important that we do not allow people just to randomly come up when nobody is around to pet. So that's something that the autocrat or the equestrian marshal should announce at morning court. That's just a quick little, by the way, guys, because kids, kids love to come and pet the ponies. You know, they want to see them. Ponies don't go out to hurt somebody. They just don't have the visual if somebody gets around them or they might be a little skittish that day, especially if cold weather moves in. If it was hot the day before and we wake up with a frost in the morning, those horses are going to be pretty frisky because they love cold weather. It's something about their hair growing. So I don't know. Um, the equestrian, we're going to move to the, the equestrian coordinator who's doing the tournament can get with the autocrat to find out if they want to have prizes. Then they can go out and ask for largesse or whatever needs to be done. Usually the autocrat, the marshal in charge, and the equestrian coordinator will work together to find out whether we want to give a prize, do we just want to give recognition, do we want to just give a little largesse for everybody who competed, thank you for coming out, because it's important. It takes a lot to bring horses to an event, and because you got to take care of them every day, and a lot of times you won't see equestrians doing anything else because they need to be with their horses. And please, please, please don't think they don't want to help. It's a responsibility to have those horses on site. So someone needs to stay close by camp. If you get called into court, you know, you just, we take care of each other. The biggest goal is we're, we're a equestrian family is to take care of one another and bring in new people and get them brought up with the basics and get them trained and have fun. The biggest thing is having fun. I so missed it for four years, and I'm so glad that I am back, and my horse is coming along just fine, um, and we're just tickled to death that uh, I'm going to be able to compete with her, um, and of course, uh, we always want to be welcoming, um, when B and B's and um, autocrats are asked, hey, um, is it okay if I bring a horse? I'm not gonna ride the horse. I just want the horse to be exposed. Absolutely, but you've got to follow the safety protocol. Now, I don't have any of my paperwork. Somehow it, it got in a box that's in storage. And I will find it and I will get it posted so that we can have, but if you ever have any questions, you can go to the Onsiora Equestrian Facebook page and post. There's also a Yahoo's group that's still out there and we still get emails on it. You can ask questions. I am available anytime on Facebook under Kel Sorensen. Give me your jingle. I'll be glad to answer questions or help you. Um, there's several others. There's um, Robin Daniel. She is, <clears throat> oh my God, she knows horses like nobody's business there is michelle frazier or sutrua she is also good with answering questions about horses and different things her mom was one of the first original equestrians L lorraine frazier honorable lady lorraine frazier and um sadly enough we lost her about nine years ago and then her daughter came back about three years ago and have just a static because Michelle brought with her the mounted archery with John. So, and Galen, uh, Sir Galen, um, is our dep is our kingdom equestrian officer, and Robin Daniels, and I don't know her new name because we killed Cambria, is now the deputy KEO. And I'm sure she'll pop in there in a minute and 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 ask a question. And uh, um, so, at the end of the event, it is very important that the equestrian marshal in charge stays on site until all horses have left the facility or the event area. 
It is the equestrian's responsibility to take care of cleaning up after their own horses or helping clean up for others. Now, you might get people who will come over and say, hey, I'll clean up all your poop if you'll give me an opportunity to commune with your horse. We're always looking for people who want to help because we want to teach them the proper way to be around horses, how to handle horses. We want to teach as well as we want to share, but it is not our goal to bring a horse for someone else to ride unless they are willing to pay for or chip in or make some kind of arrangement to lease that horse to bring because it costs money to haul a horse and a trailer and feed and hay. And it, it's, we want to, we want to share, but we don't want what happened many, many years ago. It got to the point where people just expected us to, and we had to back off a little bit and that's okay. We are here to share our love with horses, with the kingdom and anywhere we can. So once everybody has left the site, the equestrian marshal in charge will do a report to give to the KEO and give to the autocrat so that everything, how many horses were on site, how many riders, were there any injuries, what was the event, what was the theme, um, and there's a few other things on there. Um, it's a self-fill-in sheet. And that needs to be done preferably within the first 10 days, shorter if possible, but definitely within the 30 days of the event. Don't do like I did and forget. <laughs> I started it, put it aside, and it sat there. <laughs> so it's important to follow through with the paperwork. Um, many times at events, you will have authorizing marshals who are willing to work with individuals who can show a proficiency for at least getting their authorization for riding. Not games, but for riding. And it has to be an official event. And hopefully after all the plague is gone, we can start having official practices again in different areas so that everybody who lives all over the place, because we don't all live close, can come and do equestrian practices, you know, and do official equestrian practices, which in, involves um, insurance for equestrian practices. Once the horses are gone, the EQMIC should walk the site with the autocrat to make sure that the horses and their areas are cleaned up and manure is spread out and everything is spread so that it will go back into the ground. And with that, I am going to open it up to questions because I know I left a couple things out. So, I'm ready. Okay, I have questions. <laughs> okay. I was writing them down while you were talking. Okay, so Good. you said um, something that made me think. I don't know. I, I could be wrong. I may have mis misinterpreted what you said. but So, do you guys have like authorization cards just like the fighters do for equestrian do you have to get authorized for different things or how does yes, that work we do. you do okay yes we have to fill out paperwork just like the fighters we fill out the, uh, the paperwork we send it to the dep uh, to the kingdom equestrian officer and then he puts it online mm -hmm. and then we can get our card offline just like we would log in just like we did for like the fighters do mm -hmm. like all the things but yes we have to be authorized in mounted archery it has to be separate um games has to be separate then there's general writing um jousting that's kind of a specialty driving uh is a specialty and that's starting to come along it at its own little pace um i'm sure there's a couple other that i have overlooked but yes to your question yes Cool. So do they check those just like they do with the fighters when you guys go to have a tournament or something? They do if the equestrian marshal in charge 
doesn't recognize a new writer. It's gotcha. very important that we should check them, but most of us, because there's only like five or six of us now. Right. But if we had a new writer come in, say, hey, I got authorized at such and such, they need to show us sure. or we can, you know, look it up. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. I have a question that is, I'm just asking it right now. Um, but I was the person that asked about cattle and oxen. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and truthfully, if we were being correct with the uh, period, horses were real expensive and oxen were not. Um, but even though the East Coast and, and New England, there's quite a few Teamsters. Uh, not so much in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm having to to train my, my heifer and, and get her all. She is a miniature, so figure 43 inches at the hip when she's adult. Um, but we'll see, this is a whole different animal, but obviously there are in, you know, inoculations that, you know, should be given and, and the same thing about the manure and Mm -hmm. and all that but as far as i know there aren't any possibly sca rules let alone kingdom or anything like that um i have been talking to marcus Le uh, pronounce it marcus ledoit up in illinois i think hmm. and um he's on the medieval um husbandry i've known him back when we were doing emails to do the listing for people to discuss things. Um, and, and there have been a couple of ox teams at like Penzik, um, which is possibly a dream, but I doubt if I'll ever make it there. Um, I was thinking Gulf Wars. I actually was planning this year to make it to Warlord, which of course didn't happen. Um, but it would be, you know, where she, she has a cart and, you know, just walk her around, let people, hey, this is a little cow. And yes, cows can be oxen. The word mm -hmm. oxen simply means a bovine that is hitched to work. That's it. Um, well, I, okay, can, I, can I interrupt for just a moment? Yes, ma'am. Please do. Okay, as far as the SCA with livestock, they're very hesitant due to the fact of the unpredictability. SCA equestrian, equestrian means equine. So we allow mules, we allow donkeys, but as far as goats, oxen, bovine, so far they're very, very, very against that. Even though it is period correct, we have goats that cart, very period. Um, no, we can't even bring goats. That's down here where I'm at. So I just wanted to let you know that it applies mainly to the equine species. Okay, where, where are you, ma'am? Uh, I'm down in Ravensfort, Huntsville, Texas. Huntsville, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we have them around here, but they cannot go to events just yet. It would have to be proposed as an experimental activity, be approved for that, and then you have to go through all the experimental reports. We have this many goats, nothing happened. We have that many cows, nothing happened. And then after a certain amount of years, the board will go, oh, okay, well, this is cool. But that's a whole separate thing, equine versus bovine. Um, if, if I could, after this is all over, because there are people that are interested in just horses here, and I understand that. But if I could get with you perhaps uh, on um, Facebook or something, and find out how do I go about, you know, getting that started. Oh, that'd be fantastic, um, yes. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, no, I, I, I've, been, I've been wanting goats for a while to show up. Never <laughs> had the opportunity to be around oxen yet. So. Yeah, well, and, and the neat thing about it is that this lady is, is polled, and like I said, she's short. She's going to be... 
should be pony size, might be max 600 pounds. But the neat thing is, is that sometime around Christmas 2021 is she's going to freshen and it would be really neat to bring her so that not only people would see what an ox, you know, pulling a cart would be like, but also be able to mm -hmm. learn how to, you know, milk and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that would just be just fun. I, I actually had a pair of Highlanders, um, Highland, uh, Scott's Highland cattle that also mm -hmm. were trained and, and they were just fantastic. And, uh, you know, people had never seen a hairy cow to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> Pulling a cart. It was really neat. Yeah. I apologize. I don't know how to put my camera on. So. No, that's fine. That's but, fine. Uh, that, that perhaps you were um, wanted by the FBI and didn't want us to see your face. <laughs> That's very possible, but no, if you're willing, the, the other big obstacle to that is somebody willing to take on all the paperwork of getting that accomplished, so. Yeah, it, you know, once I find out what the paperwork is, you know, I've got, because of my accident, I can't go back to work for an unforeseen amount of time, and so um, she's actually part of my physical and occupational therapy because I walk with her and I brush her and, and all that. So um, let's get it done. Let's get it started. It sounds great. Yeah, you know, uh, because once one person sees, oh, well, we could do that, then we might see more of it. And certainly, you know, if you get started. You know, and people say, can I get some help hauling this? And yeah, sure, pile it in the cart. <laughs> Bring out your bed. I want pictures, Leo Floyd, and I want to see pictures of this oxen in her cart because it sounds well, adorable. I certainly will as soon as she's old enough to pull it. She's only five months old. She's, if you know cattle, she's about the size of a one month old Angus calf. Aww. And she's five months old. You I know, want to see but, pictures of that too, not just her. Oh part. yeah, she just sounds yeah. cute. Yeah, she is. <laughs> I'm an animal um, person, so yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, well I'll I'll be quiet now and let somebody else talk. Oh, you're fine. Is there um, any no, other okay. questions? Yeah, I have another question actually. Actually, two other questions. Um. Okay. So you said there was something else that needed to be at gate, but none of us knew the answer. What's the other thing? Okay, so it's very important that you have the livestock equestrian rules, and I drew a blank, but there is a code, USC code, that states about how dangerous animals and unpredictability, and you have to have that warning, just like you have to have the bully warning and the harassment warning at gate, gotcha. so that people can see it. Cool. And of okay. course, waivers. You mm -hmm. need to have the waivers at gate so everybody can sign in. And sometimes um, if the uh, gate person has the opportunity, they will print the waivers with that warning on it because you can download them with the warning on it. Um, yes. And there's one other thing that nobody, well, I haven't heard yet. There's one other thing that's mandatory that we have to have to have an event with equestrian. Insurance. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. So insurance is very important. It needs to be put in no less than six weeks beforehand. Mm -hmm. I recommend two months um, because then it only costs $50. If you hit the one mark month mark out, it's going to cost two hundred dollars. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because they have. It takes about a month to six weeks to get it through, so that they can send the insurance policy to the park or to the event area, and then there a copy needs to be sent to the Kingdom Equestrian Officer so that he knows that that event is has insurance. That is very it's important. Legal. Yeah. It's legal. Now, that is something that the autocrat and the equestrian marshal in charge can discuss. Normally, the, the autocrat does the insurance yep. paperwork and sends it in at the same time that they, they do it at this around the same time they're doing other stuff. 
If they need help, then they need to reach out to the equestrians because we will help them. Many of us have done enough of it that we know how to get it done and ready and get it in. Yeah, Kel, I remember back when um, Orlando and I first moved here and started playing in Namron. We actually had, it was kind of mm, sad and it was a big mistake on our autocrats fault, but I guess they really didn't know. But we had an event that we had said we were having equestrian, we had people lined up to come, the site was good with it, and then the insurance didn't get turned in and we didn't get to do it. So we had to tell them mm. they couldn't come. So yeah, don't do what we did. <laughs> I wasn't the Elsie autocrat. did it too. <laughs> don't do what Elsie we did. Elsie had that happen too. They didn't realize that A didn't do it and A thought B had done it and B thought A had done it and before you know it, it was too late. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. That's why I recommend um, it's part of the checklist. Mm -hmm. um, when I did my paperwork for, I took what um, Orlando and Kat had put together for autocratic, autocratting on simple, you know, the four pager. Well, I took a section of that and I, you tuned it up for if you're going to have equestrians on board so that they have a checklist. I just cool. I have to find it. Yeah, if you do find it, that'd be a great resource to. Yeah, if not, I'll just group. redo it. I think I saved it. Cool. But with all the moving and stuff. Yeah. But uh, that's all I have, unless you have more questions. I'm, we, are we good on time? Oh, yeah, we still have 20 but, minutes. Yeah. But. I have one question, and once again, it doesn't have anything to do with equestrians, but talking about other animals, and dogs and cats are allowed on most sites. Um, that would be something that I would think that should be up at the gate as well for people to realize that, hey, just because that's a pretty dog or a cute puppy doesn't mean you can just run up and, and pet it. Um, so from a no. seneschal standpoint, yeah. um, I can tell you why we don't do that. Uh, okay. Because I've been a seneschal before and autocratted a lot of events. Um, usually it's the site that says that we can have animals and not necessarily the SDA. I mean, yes, we're allowing them to bring their pets, but if we post anything like that at all. And we're liable if something we happens. We become liable. Yep, that's right. Yep. That's why yeah, we remember, can't ask I, I worked be... with Social Security for 25 years, so I understand government. Yep. yep. That's why we can't ask to see vaccination records or service dog information or any of that, because then we become liable. Well, yeah, because, you know, most people are, are intelligent enough, hopefully, not to bring animals, uh, dogs or cats, that get really wild around people, but it's happened. And Animals, just, I mean, you can't control children, so why do you expect to be able to control right. animals? And I've known a lot of animals that are more controlled than children, so. Yeah. Yeah, we've had to ask some people to leave because they just can't get their dogs to settle down. And, mm -hmm. you know, it happens. Yep. Yes. Well, that's why often you, you'll see if there is a pet policy, usually it will be somewhere in the site flyer or on the website beforehand, just if it's a yes or a no. Moonshadow's standard statement is basically well-behaved pets are welcome. Um, if you're badly behaved, we may kick you off site and keep your pet. Yeah, um, you know. You know, it's <laughs> <laughs> Most SCA people are responsible about bringing, you know, well-behaved dogs and cats because they don't get to have any fun if they're spending the whole time monitoring their animal. Exactly. Yeah. My exactly. Dogs are great. Is, I love your background. Thank you. It's just. Um, I just pulled it off the internet. It's the rose window from Notre Dame. Oh, so that's not in your house. That's oh, a, no. that's a official. <laughs> no, that's how cool. The Zoom will how do cool like green screen background type stuff. Like if I start moving, you can tell that this is really. Yeah, yeah. But then this is the daughter of the programmer, so we should know that you're you're higher up than. <laughs> you just there's literally if you if you have an actual downloaded copy of Zoom, like if you have yeah. an account. You can just put up backgrounds. And it just says, do you have a green screen? Do you not? And if you don't, it'll just kind of adjust it as best it can for you. 
Um, I don't own a green screen. I mean, I could probably like hang green fabric back here or something. Yeah. But that's just I cool. like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. I wanted something uh, less busy than my office and possibly at least more appropriate for like SEA stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is neat. We don't actually use this for work, but if we did, I'd probably still put that up. <laughs> there you go. We, we have Google Meet for work, so. Ah. Well, I'm still three quarters bedridden, so that's why I'm just sitting up in, in bed and, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I really appreciate all the information that y'all have given. Um, and I'm certainly, uh, I don't do horses anymore, although I grew up in a saddle, but uh, that's why I'm, I'm to the, the cattle and stuff. Uh, but I'll definitely, if somebody needs, I mean, you don't have to have a horse to help with the autocrat or the, the horse, the equestrian people. Exactly. And, Very true. Exactly. And, you know, like I said, I've, I've been around horses and, and everything all my life. And so that, that's good. Um, what, what do y'all do about fly control? Is it up to the individual person or? Yes, it is. Um, it's, everybody uses their own method of keeping the flies off their horses. Everything from putting a sheet on, which is a fly sheet, a uh, fly mask, uh, rubbing them down, spraying them down. There's a variety of different things. There's even little things you can put around their legs and their ears and their neck to keep the, the flies and the mosquitoes off. It's, every, it's, it's personal preference, press, per, personal choice. Personal preference, I would personal like, choice. Exactly. I would like if Robin, who's out there, would tell us her SCA name because I feel so embarrassed that I'm, I can't remember it. <laughs> it's Daichin Imate. Okay. Da I'll, I'll spell it to everyone. Let me put it in chat. It's easier that oh, way. Yeah, that would be good. And I know that it has a meaning, right? Yes. It, <laughs> y'all will laugh, just go ahead and laugh. But uh, there it is in chat. I have one of my really good friends actually named me Tiny Mongol Warrior Woman. So okay. <laughs> my, my name, I left off the tiny. So Daichin is warrior, Emite is woman. So I'm warrior woman. I like it. I love that. Thank I you. Do too. Yeah, it only, it only took me 10 years to, like, one day I'm Viking, one day I'm Mongo, one day I'm 14th century. So I finally decided on this one. So My little brother named me, Leofwin, means beloved friend. In Very good. I like it. So. Well, I have a Mongol name, but I can't quite remember it at the moment. I wrote it down, <laughs> and it means black horse. Okay. I thought it was black horse. I, I actually want to find one that means snake warrior. Warrior <laughs> snake. Snake warrior. That'd be cool. Oh, you should. You should. I think I should. <laughs> totally should. Real I mean, it chased uh, me down. Kel was uh, bit by a snake at 40th year, so that's yeah. why we're all like, oh, that would be very fitting. She spent, what, yes. a week or so in the hospital? Yeah. So was it a rattler or a cotton mouth? Cotton, a uh, copperhead. 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 And he bit, bit me twice, and he was mm. about four feet long. So did somebody catch it and kill it, and you could eat it? Uh, they catched it, sure. they caught it, killed it, and I'm waiting on my trinket from it. They were making me oh. something out of the skin. So yeah, they, they said it Gulf Wars, but they didn't say what year Gulf War. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no, Belgatai beheaded it with a shield. Yes. Yep. And it was stripped, gutted, and salted before I ever got to the hospital. Yeah. So. Yeah, I had to spend four days. It was, he bit me twice. He gave me a warning bite and I didn't catch it. I thought it was a stick. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I kicked him. Mm-hmm. And he, oh, yeah. So he gave me his final warning. And needless to say, my nickname is Kel Snakebane. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like it. You can, uh, it's something called Rep Tan, R E P dash T A N. And it walks you right through how to how to do, and it's the chemical and everything. And um, being out here in in the Panhandle of Texas, we've got lots and lots of rattlers. Mm. We actually taste better barbecued than fried, by the way. Yeah, but then baked. I, oh yeah, and okay. baked is excellent over <laughs> rice. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm like I'll barbecue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I um, my daughter keeps coming to the door and saying that supper has been ready. We're having trout tonight, so Yum. I really need to go. I thank okay. everybody yeah. for the vast amount of information that I have received so far and will continue to receive on these courses. And I thank you, Kat, for doing this. You're welcome. Yes. I'm glad. Thank you for hosting it for me. It. <laughs> well, thanks for teaching, Kel. Um, you if anybody still... has any other questions, I guess we can all go ahead and go. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, if you have questions, just look me up. I'm Kel Sorensen on yes, Facebook. So I'll answer as best I can. And if not, I'll defer you to somebody who can. That's the way I work it. Thank all you right. so very much. Bye, guys. Thank have you. a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.